the Right to Reason podcast. I am your host, Robert Stanley. Today, we are talking to the godless engineer about whether we should trust Biden, AOC, and the DNC. It's the Right to Reason podcast. To suggest that, you know, you can't you can't trust like you wouldn't leave your car on the road at a Black Lives Matter uh, rally. I mean, that's based on race. It's totally based on race. And like if I have a gun, you have a gun and you fire a warning shot, you know what my next reaction would be. I feel like I rubbed you the wrong way with that whole thing. Like, like once we got to like BLM, Rittenhouse, and all that, like, I feel like you were like, oh, man, this guy's an asshole. Well, <laughs> I mean, I'm anti-radical, right-wing, crazy limbs. <laughs> they ended up electing the guy that wrote the crime bill that they're protesting against, amongst other things. But, but I mean, they weren't protesting against the crime bill. I know. Uh, I know. Uh, all- it seemed like you were saying that the 94 crime bill was like the democrats aren't responsible because they got tricked by the republicans and they said they're sorry which like t- like i hear something like that no no no, no i'm no, like no, what no, that, you know, but I'm, 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 uh, that's not what i said i didn't say the democrats were sorry i said biden had biden. Uh, you know, This episode of the Right to Reason podcast is brought to you by our patrons and contributors like me. We have all recognized the value of the unrestrained marketplace of ideas and have decided to make a difference. You can make a difference too. Contribute at patreon.com forward slash right and learn more about your right to reason at the right to reason.com. Your activism is appreciated. Oh, I'm doing pretty good. How are you doing? Fantastic, fantastic. We finally got, uh, got I'm in Texas, so we got past that whole winter storm, but it mm-hmm. kicked a lot of ass down here. And uh, where are you at? Georgia, right? No, uh, well, normally I'm in North Alabama. Uh, oh, I live near Huntsville. Instead of doing the uh, typical, how did you become an atheist thing? What do you say? I just play the intro that's on your YouTube channel real quick. It's like one minute. Is that cool? Oh, yeah, totally fine. What's up, heathens? How y'all doing? I'm John Gleason, the godless engineer, and I spent my entire life as a Christian until one day one of my closest friends challenged my faith in the Christian God. He told me that you have to believe everything in the Bible or else you're not a real Christian. I had never considered the idea that I wasn't a Christian because there was no way that I could believe all of the fantastical things that were in the Bible. I always felt like that was the only option available to me until I started considering what I actually believed. At the end of that journey, I realized that I was an atheist. Since then, I have dedicated my free time to learning why all of these apologists that we see everywhere nowadays are simply wrong when they talk about history, science, politics, and even their own religion. I started my YouTube channel to help people just like me find community outside of religion as well as learn why people are just simply wrong when they say things like evolution is a lie or atheists don't exist. I wanted to inspire fellow atheists as well as other religious people to stand up and use their voice against the false information that's being regurgitated on social media. We discuss all of these topics five times a week to help you find that community as well as teach you some things that you may not know. If you want to know why these apologist talking points are wrong about religion, atheism, history, and politics, then I invite you to subscribe to Learn With Me. And everybody can find that at The Godless Engineer on YouTube. I highly recommend it. I would assume all my listeners have already heard your content before. Um, (laughs) You're fairly well known in the community, but in, in case anybody hasn't, it's in the show notes. Just click on it. And um, any, anywhere else that you'd recommend we send them, John, or, or would that be sufficient? Um, I mean, I think that you can pretty much get around anywhere by going there. Um, okay. I, I have a Facebook page and a Facebook group. And, of course, there's always my Twitter where people can get in touch with me. Uh, that's just God. I'm pretty much Godless Engineer anywhere. So if you're on a social media platform, just search for Godless Engineer. Chances are it's me. Cool, cool. Well, thanks for uh, thanks for stopping by today, man. Like, I really appreciate you coming by. I'm a big fan. Uh, which atheist are you? We've actually got like denominations in atheism now. <laughs> it's like it's like we're one <laughs> of the religions. You've got your uh, 
your weird Sargon of Akkad atheist that's like, I don't know if they're really right wing, but they're like bitter. <laughs> they just come off a little bitter. Right. And then you got your, um, your I just love science and facts and I don't care what they did kind of guys that are like, um, it's always guys. It's not girl, girl atheists. They like David Silverman. They like Lawrence Krauss. They like, uh, I don't know who else is on the chopping block. Was it the rationality rules guy? I think he caught some static. Mm-hmm. Um, then you got the, the more SJW types, right. That are like, uh, they're, they're more concerned with civil rights, race, trans rights, that sort of thing. Probably, I would say they're the closest to humanists, but they're also like, I don't know, like I like them the best, but they're the least cool ones. Does does that make sense? I don't know. They're like, like the other ones are, they seem to be, they seem to be more interesting to listen to their content, but then you wait a little while and something really screwed up comes out like i saw something where uh Shermer was he was posting some kind of it, it came off a little anti-trans i don't i don't know if that was his intention but it, you know like I, what are you doing why is that the hill you want to fight on? you know i don't get it but anyway <laughs> but but i don't want to i don't want to talk over the whole time like what where, where would you line up like would you have dinner with silverman <laughs> and kraus <laughs> Would that be a, a well, fun Well, I mean, meal? previously, I, I I would have had dinner with Silverman. Uh, I've, I've met him a few times. And uh, prior to his, I guess, uh, fall, uh, I mean, he, he seemed like a pretty decent guy. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I, I really don't see it as a problem for – you know, atheists to have these different groups that, you know, each, each one's a part of, um, that I actually think that that's a problem for, uh, uh, theists or, or, or Christians or, or, um, any of the main religions, because you're espousing that you get the one absolute truth, but then there's so many different versions of the absolute truth. Whereas in atheism, you just have, you know, what, Atheist. The only thing that connects atheists is the fact that we don't believe in a god, mm. and that's it. So naturally, any kind of large, generalized kind of group like that is is going to have a lot of different nuances to it, and, and different groups are going to form and everything like that. I mean, that's just a normal sort of a group dynamic. Um, but I, I would definitely put myself in a more progressive like socially progressive and uh, i guess physically progressive sort of uh area as far as uh, politics goes um but i mean ultimately on my channel i'm really just looking to build a community of atheists and, and give atheists a place where we can you know um sort of uh, joke around and, and talk about the things that we have problems with uh, as far as religion goes and, and like the actual uh, actions and uh, statements that religious people make uh, sometimes in our direction, uh, sometimes uh, just in, you know, things that they say in general. Um, so, uh, I mean, I would put myself in, in the more progressive, yeah. uh, I guess, type atheist uh, yeah. area. Your show's not really like about the the divisiveness within atheism. It's more about let's let's get down to brass tacks and figure out how to beat this <laughs> corruptive religious stuff, right? Right. I, I mean, basically, I do have some some things where I I you know deal with political topics, mm-hmm. and I I really show how you know my progressive side a bit because I'm I'm very much on the um, I, I guess anti David Silverman. Uh, sort of side of things, uh, the the uh, the very anti-conservative, radical right, which is kind of what they've become, and um, so th- there are, are on occasions where I bring that up, uh, it, but it's a very specific situations that kind of cause me to tackle that. Uh, normally, those situations would include where like religion intersects with politics uh, or uh, atheism in general is intersecting with politics. In in the case of David Silverman, he was very prominent figure in atheism for the longest time. And so when he starts putting out, you know, content that uh, people are going to be like, Hey, he's an atheist. I kind of feel the need to step up and, and be that, progressive uh i guess punching bag for for their radical right 
uh, group. And, and so, uh, and I know that it's not just me. Uh, there's plenty of other people in our community that also, you know, push back against it. Um, it's just, it takes very specific situations for me to feel like it's warranted to like, I guess, use my platform to speak out. I, I, I espouse most of my political views on Twitter, actually. Uh, that's where I kind of in- interact the most. I had uh, I had David on just before the event, and he actually said, believe all women, just just before the whole, uh, I don't want to use names, but, you know, but so, but, yeah. but before that whole thing, but, and then I did have him on once since then, but it was a debate. It wasn't like, you're back, let's, you know, but, but not that I would, I would criticize someone for doing that. I just wasn't sure that that would be a good thing to do. Mm-hmm. As far as the debate, though, I don't, I don't know. I, I caught a little flack from it from some of the listeners. They're just like, why are you platforming that guy? And I'm like, I'm, I platform Nazis and white supremacists and, you know, like how is having like, it's not like a platform. It's a debate. They were debating right. your point. And he was debating race with a black guy where he was arguing. I actually used a clip from your show. It was a clip from your show that you clipped from David Smalley's show. But oh, it was yeah. easier to find on yours because you, you addressed this whole topic about how he he doesn't believe in um, what was it? White privilege or uh, mm-hmm. something like that. Yeah. And, and I played that clip. And the. the the guy that was his opponent, uh, Steve Hill, just got fucking pissed when he heard it. I guess he hadn't heard it before, but uh, where he was just like, uh, George Floyd is a piece of trash. I'm glad he's dead or something like that. Yeah. And, uh, but anyway, I, I I enjoyed your commentary on it. I thought I thought you presented a lot of facts in that video. So I would encourage anybody if you're if you're interested in, in that topic, Black Lives Matter or, or uh, Silverman's recent comments on it, check out Godless Engineers. Uh, video on it you did that like what maybe maybe a couple months ago yeah it, it was it was a few months ago uh so probably and I, I did it right around the time when david actually said all all of his comments about it and i, I it just it still astounds me that somebody can be like that heartless and that uh i i guess subtly racist about it because i mean he was i mean he he comes off as a very racist individual now yeah he seems to post a lot about that stuff and mm-hmm. for example, I, I have opinions about, let's say, um, if my daughter is going to go into a bathroom, I don't want like she's a teenager and I wouldn't feel comfortable with the bathroom being just open to anybody. Right. Men, women, what have you. Like if it's a family bathroom where it's just like you go in, lock the door. Sure. But like mm-hmm. I'm not going to post every other day about that mm-hmm. because it's easily misunderstood as anti-trans, whereas it's not an anti-trans right. thing. I just if you're going to make the argument. Well, bathrooms should just be open to everybody. Eh, not, not like the big public ones. No, I, I wouldn't be for that. But that's not necessarily like something that's a major part of my life. You know what I mean? Where I'm just like constantly like, I don't want men in my the bathroom with my daughter. You know, like, and I feel like if I did post that all the time, I'm probably just wanting to get attention. Right. I'm probably just wanting right. to set you up so that you you see it and you go, hey, what is this about? What are you anti-trans? I'm like, did I say that? Did I say, you know, and I, I think maybe that's what he and a lot of. A lot of folks are doing right now because it's really easy to try to provoke people to use the race card to try to provoke them to to be woke. You know what I mean? When, right. When, well, I, I also think that it uh, it kind of fundamentally misunderstands the entire situation because, like the the individuals that we're talking about here, I mean, it's not like they present as a as a male. And they just throw on a wig and they want to go into yeah. a women's bathroom and are, are like, I'm a woman now right. or something. Um, that that's that, that would be something, I guess, totally different. Uh, but the, 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 that's not even the issue um, that, that's being dealt with on that particular context because the, the actual issue being dealt with is the fact that they're, you know, trans people – uh, who identify and present as the the gender that they do uh, should be able to use the appropriate restrooms. And right. just because, you know, some people want to make a big deal about whatever their genetics say, you know, they want to force uh, women to use a man's bathroom. And that only puts the, the, the woman at risk. And so I just... I don't know. I feel like that entire conversation uh, is is fundamentally misunderstood by those that are like, I don't want no man in my restroom, right? right exactly. Or woman, woman in the, the man's restroom, or something like that. But like, what? That's the exact same thing we're talking about, though. Like, where I would say I don't want John and my daughter in the same bathroom, right? 
Like mm-hmm. that's that's what I'm referring to. But if I'm talking about that constantly and posting about that, I'm kind of dog whistling to the people that are anti-trans, you know. And in the yeah. same way, like I think that whenever he says George Floyd was a piece of shit, yeah, the guy the guy was a criminal. He, he clearly wasn't somebody I would look up to, you know. But you're you're saying that thing, and maybe you're right about that. I don't know. Maybe the guy improved his life later on, late in life. I, I don't know. I uh, actually whether the guy was a real piece of shit at the time or not, but you're saying that, but you're kind of dog whistling to the, the racist, you know? And Mm -hmm. I think that's, that's what a lot of these folks are doing is they're just, they're just wanting to get attention and your content seems to, to focus more on let's get to the facts. Let's get to what the best arguments against theism and and anti-science ideas are like, it's not like you're just trying to get attention. Oh yeah, definitely not. Uh, try just trying to get attention. Um, I, I really want to have like good discussions on you know the existence of God and uh, as well as other uh, topics that religious people bring up, uh, whether it be morality or uh, I mean you, you could bring up any any number of topics that intersect with politics. So uh, yeah, I, I mean I, I just I, I really just want to advance the conversation. So what do you think of Biden? You a big Biden fan? <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I, big Biden fan. I mean, <laughs> none of us are I'm, big I'm, Biden fans. <laughs> yeah, uh, well, I mean, I'm I'm a fan of Biden, uh, uh, especially now that he's in office. I mean, I think that you know, just like with uh, just like with Trump. You know, if if he succeeds, we succeed. Uh, Biden wasn't my first pick, uh, but but that doesn't that doesn't really deter me from you know supporting him uh, now. Uh, I think that you know the actions he's taken have been much needed action. Um, I would I would really hope that the you know Congress could somehow get past their Trumperism. Uh, and and try to work uh, both sides work together to pass legislation and stuff but it really just kind of seems like the right is leaning harder you know into uh, uh trumperism and and will be that way for the next while so that that's a bit concerning so weird like it, it, I, huh? i'm worried about him coming back like on one end i'm thinking he is totally splintering the right i mean i so many right-wing people i know i mean you know over here in Texas, you, you got the same issue there in Alabama, but so many people I know are saying, we're not even going to vote anymore. It doesn't matter. And I'm like, yes, you know, like, good. <laughs> Stay your ass at home. But if he comes back in 2024, we could seriously be fucked, man. Well, yeah, I mean, I think that I think that he'll possibly come back in 2024. But there's there's a lot of time between now and then. Um yeah, for for stuff to happen. So uh, whether he comes or or one of his sons uh, picks yeah. it up, um, I mean, I I would hope that the American public would not want more of that shit. Obviously, there's a good portion of the of the right that want that still want that. But I think the problem is is that Trump in his first term. Uh, really hurt his relationship with enough republicans that they're like you know what fuck this guy like i don't i don't want they, they've already said i don't want four four more years of him now i don't under, I, I guess i can't think about what biden could do that would be like you know what trump was simply better <laughs> I, I don't I I don't know I can't think of anything that Biden could do that that would turn the Republicans right around. Did you hear what that uh, that didn't vote for Trump this past time? Did you hear what Liz Cheney said about him? About Trump or yeah, it got Biden? A bunch of a bunch of attention from all the right wing people because they were like, "Oh snap, fucking Liz Cheney!" Did you ever Did you ever see that uh, movie um, Vice? Vice. About, uh, about yes, Dick Cheney? I did. That was yep. so good. I just, I finally came around to watching it like three years later. So good, <laughs> dude. But yeah, Liz Cheney says uh, she's not interested in Trump being president again. And you can tell like it, like the mood in the room when she said it, like everybody's like, oh, you know, and it's yeah. it's definitely interesting to watch them splintering over this. But I hope you're right, man. I hope I hope they just are able to move on in the next four years. As far as Biden, I, I feel like we're getting exactly what we thought we would get. Like everybody knew it. We knew he wasn't really promising much, and the stuff he did promise he probably wasn't even going to do. It was just voting against Trump, basically, and and that's all we mm-hmm. got. I mean, he he's done some done some good stuff with environmental stuff. He's done some 
uh, you know, trans people are back in the military. Um, I don't know what else has he done. The, the pipe well, I mean, he ended the uh, he ended the private federal prisons. Uh, that was a, really? a kind of a shocker. I All know. Of them? Like, ever, like, there's no more private prisons. No, no, no. Uh, private federal. He can't really control like state and everything like that. Oh, but he that. he did start the process of ending the federal government's relationship with private like federal prisons. He started um, the process. Like that. That sounds to me like his fifteen dollar minimum wage. You know, like well. We'll deal with that in five years. Like, you're not going to be president in five years, jackass. Like, do it. You know, like, oh, just... no. Well, I mean, uh, so what I mean by that is that he, he, he kicked, like, he kicked it off. I mean, he signed an executive order that kicked it off and, and started the process, but it's not like you can just immediately, like, cut the ties, okay. like, you know, s- severing the head of a snake or something like that. I mean, th- these, these things do take time. And so it's going to be a process to, uh, you know, uh, shut, shut these places down or, or in this relationship between the federal government and private prisons. But, um, Biden signed an executive order that effectively will, you know, um, in that relationship. Okay. Well, I guess that's good. So, yeah. Who uh, is, but I mean, uh... there's, there's that thing. And then he, you know, he's working on getting that COVID relief bill passed. Um, and I know a lot of people are upset, uh, over, you know, getting, uh, was it $1,400 instead of the 2000, but, um, you know, I, I don't know. I, I feel like that's a little bit nitpicking. Like I get that a lot of people want it to be $2,000 a piece, but I think that, you know, doing that, that Biden's already doing a whole lot more than Trump wanted to do. And I mean, Trump's first COVID uh, relief bill back in 2020, I mean, it, it had so many holes in it that it was, you know, just exploited by Mm -hmm. churches it was exploited by the rich it was just exploited by everybody so that they got free money from the government and hardly any of it went into the hands of of real working americans and so uh, any anything that does better than that is going to be a step up um and i i kind of feel i know that the republican party doesn't want to help like the the working people like they don't want to give people money um you know they they're sitting there making up all of the ex- all of these excuses as to why you know um they shouldn't help uh, the regular working person all they ever want to do is help the rich that that this legitimately what they want to do is help rich people stay rich and get richer yeah th- i feel like those bills were just at least the first one that was it was just a way to take our tax dollars and, and give it to the rich for sure but mm-hmm. this one I don't, I don't know why he hasn't just done it though it's it's kind of crazy it's like by the time he actually does the 14 we would have needed another 2000 anyway you know so it's like what mm-hmm. what are you waiting on Here, here's my prediction the biden fans are gonna keep saying hey come on he just got there he just got there right up until the next two years and then they're going to be like look we need to focus on getting uh, the house and the senate full of democrats let's not attack biden right now you know and it's just i feel like it's just going to keep going for four years and i don't i don't think we're going to see anything man we're not going to see 15 dollars minimum wage we're not going to see legalized weed definitely not going to see single payer you know he said he wasn't going to do that he's not going to pull us out of but like trump actually didn't do that badly with the military shit he didn't end anything, but he, he at least appeared to try to end some stuff. I mean, you realize that he almost started a war with Iran. <laughs> true, right? true. That's so the main thing. Yeah, that scared the shit and, out of me. Yeah, and I mean, he did, he effectively dismantled the uh, Iran nuclear deal. True. Uh, yeah, he and did, and did. he pulled he he We're back uh, in that, though, which aren't we? not military related, but he pulled out of the Paris climate uh, you know agreement. But Biden, uh, that that's devastating for everybody. Biden put us back in the Paris one. Did he re restart the Iran deal too? I, I, th- I, I, I think that there's talks right okay. now to try to get the try to get the Iran nuclear deal. Uh, maybe not back, but they're, they're going to try yeah. to start working with Iran on on something. Uh, I'm not exactly sure, so I, I shouldn't really speak about it. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, but, but but he's definitely if he hasn't done it, he's he's going to do it. So. At least we're good on that end, because you're right. That was really stupid. <laughs> to just, <laughs> like, here's a country we don't want to get nukes. All right, let's end our contract with them so that they can get <laughs> nukes and we can go to war. But he didn't start any new wars. He just tried to. <laughs> and, and North Korea. He had that one going. 
Well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> well, while while he may not have started a new war, I really don't think that not starting a new war is <laughs> the bar that That's we should really bar. set for saying that <laughs> he did good with the military. I mean, the military has so many other different facets that go along with it uh, that you know it's it's hard it's hard to boil it down to just oh no new wars <laughs> i don't know i mean in that sense i would say we could compare him to obama in that in that way and we would give him a better rating than obama at least in that category would that be fair how how so exactly cuz obama was like bombing everybody for fucking 8 years i, I mean like he, obama have have you looked up trump's record on on bombings I mean, yeah, like I've been following along, but it's definitely gone down. But, but, but could we agree to that? Uh, tr- uh, so according to Business Insider, just now looking this up, um, Trump may have bombed Yemen more than Bush and Obama combined. Um, uh, well, I don't know. I don't. I don't <laughs> oh, think okay. maybe combined. Maybe. I think okay. he just did it more than both of those presidents. Hmm. So I mean, I, I just uh, I I don't I don't know exactly what his record is versus obama's record but just automatically assuming that that trump did better than obama on that front without actually knowing the numbers i i think is a little uh premature i mean we were both here for this whole time yeah like, but i mean it's not like i i didn't keep a track of how many bombs enough, were dropped enough. but i mean like it just Typing into Google for anybody that's listening, how much bombing did Trump do? I mean, here's here's one not from like uh, any source that I would really quote anybody, but it says Trump Trump's military drops a bomb every 12 minutes. Uh, another one says Trump, who vowed to end wars, had dropped more bombs than the other president. Uh, in Afghanistan in 2019, a record number of 7,423 U.S. bombs were dropped. Donald Trump is dropping bombs at unprecedented levels. The U.S. dropped a record number of bombs in Afghanistan uh, last year, 2019. So, I mean, it just seems like Trump actually far exceeded his predecessors on, you know, dropping bombs on people. I, I thought this was like a like a common knowledge thing. Like I, when I brought it up, I really didn't think it would be something that you would say. Uh, are you sure about that? Like, I, I thought we all kind of just understood that Obama was like bomb crazy and Trump did a lot better. But, you, you know, you make a fair point. Do I have the numbers? No, I don't. I don't know that our current media would be a great place to get that data. If you know what I mean, simply that obviously they loved Obama. They hated Trump with exception to the right wing media. That, that was just well, the opposite. But I don't know where else we. You know. So, it, I mean, how exactly would you get right, those right. numbers no, else, elsewise? That's fair. Like, I, I, really, I mean, I guess you could go directly to the White House, but I mean, yeah. the White House yeah. manipulates their numbers all the time. Sure. It, it, Trump's White House specifically. You know, it's something I'll look into. Maybe there's some good source on uh, the UN or something like that, but I'm sure we could find out. But I, I really haven't I'm, considered that maybe Trump was even worse in that regard. I thought that was like one of the one of the only things he actually did better than Obama with. You know, I know Biden. I mean, hasn't been I, in office I, th- very I long, think and he's I already think doing Trump. It. I think Trump did better for the rich working class than Obama did. Uh, I, I think that that is something that pretty. he far exceeded in. Yeah, his tax um, bill, definitely. And they're all going to see all the people that aren't like that upper 1%. They're all going to see their taxes start going up. And, you know, that was how Trump wrote it. Like he wrote it for it to slowly start increasing for everyone except the rich. But as their taxes <laughs> go up, all these freaking morons are going to blame Biden for it. <laughs> it's just... You can't win. You can't win. Like, I, I remember when it first happened, I was telling uh, people at my job, like, I, I work with a lot of uh, kind of right wing coworkers, you know, and I was telling mm-hmm. them, like, you know, this tax cuts like it's a trick, right? It's just a trick to give money to the to the richest among us. And they're like, yeah, but my taxes went down. I'm like, right. Just so that, you know, you'll smile and go about your day and not think about what he really did. And I, I just mm-hmm. couldn't convince them, man. I couldn't convince them. And now it's too late. They're, they're going to blame Biden for it anyway. Well, yeah, I mean, I have seen some people uh, do that or that they'll blame Biden for tax increases or whatnot. But um, I mean, they just simply don't understand how like the tax code works. I mean, we're still currently operating underneath Trump's you know, right. tax plan, uh, which includes increasing uh, taxes on the middle and lower classes and reducing taxes on the rich and uh, I, I, I think that his his whole tax plan was just abhorrent 
Absolutely. Yeah. I don't think I don't think Biden will mess with that too much. I think Biden's just going to probably just try to skate through and then make a lot of promises like at the last the end of the four years get us to try to vote. I, I feel like that's what the Democrats do, man. Like I'm a progressive. I'm I'm fairly liberal, but I just can't like get on team Obama or team Biden or team Kamala. Like I I feel like they're just a different kind of enemy whereas with people like Trump and the right, they say they're evil and they're evil. You know what I mean? Like you get exactly what they say they are where I feel like our our left wing DNC leaders promise you a whole bunch of stuff. You know, it's like the memes you've been seeing lately where it's like it's one plane dropping bombs under Trump administration and then like it's another plane dropping bombs under Biden, but it's got like the LGBTQ flag on it. You know what I mean? Like it's I feel like they just they really are are pulling our legs. Do you get that vibe? Well, I, I mean, I, I guess I guess I really don't uh, because, I mean, I, I don't really see the Democrats as the, uh, just a different kind of enemy. Um, I mean, true, the current administration isn't as progressive as, you, you know, like I, I know I would like them to be. But, I mean, I, I do know that like the $15 minimum wage is included in that tax, um, the, the COVID ta- uh, the COVID relief. Uh, bill that was just passed by the house and now it's got to go to the senate the fact that the senate um is is pretty much split down the middle and then kamala harris will have to cast the deciding vote i mean the democrats right now can pass whatever bills they want to without any kind of um uh, republican support which i i don't like that um i don't think that it needs to be that way i think that we need to have more bipartisan things in there but then again you have republicans in congress who were quite literally attacked Mm -hmm. by trump supporters some of them were on the trump supporters list to uh, quite literally kill on january 6th but yet they still did not vote to punish uh, the former president uh, for his his actions on on uh, January 6th. And so, I mean, I, I think that as long as the Republican Party uh, is so far right that, that they'll happily be targeted by their own party, uh, somebody within their own party. Uh, I, I mean, I, I think that until they get out of that fog that is Donald Trump, uh, I mean, I, I really I really can't see a good argument to say, well, Maybe the QAnon people should have a say, you know, like may, maybe maybe there should be bipartisan support with the person who thinks that seven flags on the left and eight <laughs> flags on the right means some kind of secret message from Trump um, or, or anybody like I, it's really hard for me to imagine a good argument that that would in, that would cause me to think that that person needs to have any kind of decision making skills uh, or decision making um, ability in our government. The one that really pissed me off about that whole Capitol riot thing. It pissed me off because it tricked me. It actually tricked me, John. And, and, and I've been tricked with this chick before. Is AOC. When AOC put out uh, that she was really scared and did that video talking about what happened. My first impression was empathy. What you would think a natural human you know, would, would feel, right? Whatever you see. That. And then I, I heard the response from the, the other uh, uh, representative. Uh, right wing one, I can't remember her name, but she's right next door. She's I'm right next door. They never stormed the place. And I'm like, oh, AOC, you got me. Because she got me before with, uh, she did like a photo op crying in front of the cages uh, at the detention centers. You see all the pictures and like, it made me feel emotional at first. And then I'm like, it was her and a bunch of camera people. Like, this is all bullshit. It was just a photo op. You know, it's not that the the message wasn't good. We need to end that. But you just, you use the, my liberal feelings against me to make me think you're this badass chick but then you know so whenever this happened with the capital riot i'm like oh aoc got me again you know why do i keep falling for her little emotional tricks but then i watched her the whole video it's like an 80 minute video and at no point does she make any of the claims like they were tro- totally straw manning her she even says uh, you know it wasn't the rioters i i, I thought that uh, a security guard was one of the rioters i misunderstood but i was still scared like she doesn't she doesn't say anything that they're claiming she said. Well, I mean, you, you know, you know, that's the exact situation with the supposed pictures of, of her crying for immigrant children or migrant children. OK, right? tell me, because I, I really I want to believe you. I really do. Ex- explain this one to me. because well, I'm not aware. of. Uh, OK, well, it was a quote unquote newly uncovered photograph. It, she was crying over a, or, or she was upset over an empty parking lot, not migrant children uh, at a protest in Texas. Hmm. So it, I mean, this is on Snopes. I mean, I, I just quickly Googled it, it 
and was able to pull it up. Why is she crying over an empty parking lot? It was at a protest. Uh, she was part of the protest, so like the as same, far as I can tell. I, I don't, there's a there's a Snopes fact check. It just says that the entire claim that she was crying over migrant sh- children, or or at a at a uh, she was fake crying at a migrant camp, yeah, uh, is just uh, completely false. I I would really love for that to be accurate. What you're saying, mm-hmm. not not that it, it's your claim. You're you're referencing someone else, but. I, I would like to believe that because that one kind of pissed me off. Like if you toy with my emotions, especially with like politics stuff, because I'm already kind of, you know, everybody goes into politics like a little skeptical because, you know, that's their job. Their job is to lie, you know. So you're like, I don't know. And then as soon as something like that comes out, it just pisses me off. So I hope I hope that's true. I'm going to pull it up real quick. No, I'm not going to give you money. Snopes. It won't let me click off of it, John. All right, here we go. So, okay, I'm looking at it now. Her looking at through the fence all sad is actually her saying why didn't more people show up for the protest oh i mean i'm i'm not saying that um apparently this was uh these were pictures that were released on a one-year anniversary of a large protest against trump's uh zero tolerance policy uh uh, apparently there was a fence uh between the uh uh, detention facility uh uh, there was a detention facility parking lot and then the fence and then that's where the protest was yeah yeah okay so it's yeah it's a fence uh blocking access to the migrant uh, migrant camp hey that's cool i see it right there yeah okay so any, anybody that is interested in what we're talking about he's right snoop says that that's you, and you can see the full image of it it's not even a migrant camp fence it's just a fence going across the street mm-hmm. well that's refreshing thank you i, uh, I mean see here's the problem I get so, with our I get current... so mad at that stuff but i i didn't even i didn't even know well see here's the problem with the current political environment is that it is completely fueled, at least by the right, mm. on propaganda. And like this is the kind of propaganda stuff that's been going on for the past four years and will continue to go on probably for the next uh, eight to 12 years. Uh, they, they do these things – all the time they misrepresent and they straw man and they pick it out just like with uh, uh, AOC it, it, during the insurrection event. Um, you know, she never once claimed that they were storming her building or anything like that, but she was, you know, uh, un- under uh, alert. She was, uh, you know, um, uh, hunkering down in her office, and 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 I would have been scared for my life too if a whole bunch, if, if a whole gr- uh, crowd of Trumpers were coming in storming government buildings i mean i i would probably be very very scared as well and and i i I wouldn't know what to do and uh, she had no idea if they were going to be coming there and storming that building that she just she just knew that there was an uh, an event going on where people were getting violent and people were being hurt i would keep a gun in my office in that situation (laughs) Well, I mean, I don't think that you can bring. Uh, I mean, the, there have been Congress Congress people that have tried to do really? that, um, you know, since the insurrection, and and they've only been told to go home, wow, and, and take it home. So you you won't be able to do that. But ideally, the you know the um the Wa- Washington uh, uh, Capitol Police, uh, they I mean they 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 should have been more prepared and they weren't. And I, I know that people are being held accountable now for the lack of action that was taken. Yeah. They were fairly prepared during the black lives matter protest that was in DC. They had cops on the steps, you know, blocking everything. But I think, mm-hmm. I think part of it is like, they didn't expect Trump supporters to act that way. Whereas they would expect a black lives matter protest to turn into a riot. And I don't think that's necessarily irrational. Like, the Black Lives Matter protests that I've been to were, were totally peaceful. I mean, it was mostly just held by churches. The only people that were threatening were actually the, the Boogaloo boys around with their AK-47s and AR-15s and, you know, all that stuff with their flowery shirts and whatnot. But, like, if I was, like, in a major city and there was going to be a, a Black Lives Matter protest, I wouldn't want to leave my car on the street because it might turn into a riot. You know what I mean? At least maybe while Trump was still president, well, that was happening. I mean— but, I wouldn't uh, I, I wouldn't uh, feel uh, scared leaving my car at a MAGA rally. And I think that's why they probably didn't think they were capable of doing that. They really underestimated them. Well, no, I you know, it, it's really amazing to me to you know to hear that because they were literally telling everybody that they were going to do it like weeks in advance. 
I, I, I mean, you, you can go like on right wing watch onto their Twitter and you can go back to, you know, their tweets, uh, pro, you know, uh, just after the election leading up to January 6th, there is, there's, uh, um, right wing, uh, a prominent right wing leader uh, after leader after leader talking about how they're, they are going to do like some kind of bloody assault Jesus. on the Capitol, on, on our government to make sure that Trump stays in power. And they said this repeatedly. So there's there's literally no reason to think that these Trump supporters wouldn't wouldn't become violent. But but also to to suggest that, you know, you can't you can't trust like you wouldn't leave your car on the road <laughs> at a Black Lives Matter uh, rally. I mean, I pe- people overturn cars and set them on fire because their favorite team wins in, in a basketball game. Right. I mean, it, I'm, I'm talking about I, a major I, I, city, though. John. I'm, I'm not talking I'm, about. Like I, I even I prefaced it with saying like the the ones I've been to, I I had my car there. You know, like it was very peaceful. But I'm saying like in, in downtown Portland, like would you park your car there? I mean, it, it, what's I mean, it, what do we? Hear? I, I I don't. I mean, I don't live in Portland, and, and so I I I really don't know the area or anything like that. I mean, personally, I, I don't. Uh, you know, I don't leave my car like um uh, unlocked uh or, or locked really out in public because we're currently in a pandemic. So I really don't go out and go anywhere. But even so, I mean, I. I mean that you, you take a risk any time you go and you park your car in a public place, right? I mean, you take a you, you take a risk. Now, does that risk increase when there's uh, the 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 current environment is is heated like it was for BLM? Uh, yeah, you, you do take a risk, but I really don't think that that should be generalized into oh, I just wouldn't trust you know a, a, a big uh, Black Lives Matter protest <laughs> yeah, uh, event that's happening in a major people. city. Yeah. Like I, I, I feel like that's really ignoring a lot of the context surrounding uh, all of that. Um, but I mean, the lack of people had just done a protest before that that was totally peaceful. I mean, it was a totally stupid. You know, there was the the anti mask things that they were doing and you know reopen hair salons and whatnot you know it it was a ridiculous protest but it was they they were armed but peaceful so i don't i I don't know man i feel like that well you see that's another thing that's kind of weird is that you know they were armed but peaceful what do you think would happen if the black lives matter movement protests were armed but peaceful they would i mean there's one kid that's uh (laughs) that that you know just shot two protesters and I mean, what's been done about him? I mean, he literally killed two people who were protesting because the police won't stop killing unarmed black people. And this this uh, white privileged as, as, as fuck kid just kills two protesters for shits and giggles, I can only assume. And, uh, about Rittenhouse? you know, no, nothing's done to him. Like there's there's been no repercussions for him. You're talking about Rittenhouse or somebody else? Rittenhouse. Yeah, I think I think, I think he's still locked up. The last last time I looked, he was taking like selfies with like prominent relig- uh, uh, religious right figures. Ugh. So he's out on bail then. Well, yeah, and I mean, uh, people raise money to 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 uh, bail him out of jail uh, when he should rightfully be in jail. I mean, he's a danger to society. He has no problem picking up a gun and just you know cold bloodedly going out there and killing right. people for no good reason other than he just wants a reason to kill somebody. Yeah, he, I mean, if, if you if you were to place if you were to have the Black Lives Matter movement act just like the Trumpers, when they go and they march with their, you know, assault rifles and everything like that, you would have uh, like just a, a bloody streets because they would they would mow down those people. They would have no problems killing those people. But, you know, the Trumpers, they get escorted out of the Capitol building after they stormed it and they killed uh, at least one officer, injured several others. They get calmly escorted out of the building. Are you serious? You think like, that's that's based on race? It's totally based on race. It, yeah. It's totally based on on who they are and what color they are. I th- I because think largely, it's based on race, but also I don't think they had seen. I, you know, I, I don't feel like it's it's. Uh, there's anything wrong with with making that observation that up till this point, these kind of MAGA rallies had been more peaceful than Black Lives Matter. I, I don't know that that that's not like a racist thing to say. You know what I mean? Like I think. Oh no, that's I'm not. I'm not. Of, I'm not saying that that's a racist thing to say i'm saying how 
how we as a country has have handled both of those types of protests, uh, uh, th- both of those types of things are like night and day. Yeah. Like it, it's just it's the, the, the difference, um, you know, between them and how they're handled, because, I mean, to frame the Black Lives Matter movement and those protests as as being violent in major cities, uh, I mean, you're really only talking about a few instances of like the black like these protests turning into riots and stuff. Mm-hmm. And and th- that was mostly due to the fact that the police and how they uh, you know, responded to the Black Lives Matter protesters. I mean, in New York, you had police officers running over protesters that were protesting in the streets. You didn't see any of that shit on January 6th. Uh, over in, uh, you know, uh, Minnesota, uh, or it was either Minnesota or, or uh, Portland, Oregon, you had unmarked cars, unmarked vans, vehicles, kidnapping protesters off of the streets with no Miranda rights with, with nothing. You just had them kidnapped off of the streets. Did you see any of that shit with the Trump supporters? No. And this, this was prior to them being violent in the streets. This was prior to them doing any kind of rioting or whatever. They were, they were being treated very poorly just for protesting. And when you have the Trumpers who are protesting, they don't get treated like that. They are allowed to carry uh, assault rifles. They are allowed to make hate-filled and and violent speeches, to to call for you know hurting other individuals. I mean, Trump himself said that he would pay the legal fees of anybody that punched out a mm-hmm. liberal uh, that that just so happened to be at one of his rallies making a ruckus. If you punched him out. Donald Trump would pay your legal fees. He was encouraging violence. And the only time – like the, the BLM uh, uh, protests got violent after the police responded to them with violence. So it, 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 it feels like a comparison of apples and oranges here. And then, and then with the, the secret police in Portland, his, uh, his defense secretary – I can't remember his name – actually said, no, you know, I don't support this. And Trump fires the guy for it. Like it's – that mm-hmm. that was very scary to me. Just random Blackwater agents grabbing people off the street. That was spooky, man. Yeah, I mean, it, it really was. I mean, they, it, all throughout the, the BLM protest, uh, people's rights were violated, and it seems like nobody was held accountable for that. Well, the Rittenhouse thing, I think he, he definitely should be charged. He shouldn't have taken the gun there. But the actual, like, the moments that he fired his weapon... I think those were justified because he was being attacked and shot at. Anybody in that situation would either return fire or die. But he, he shouldn't I mean, have been there in the first place. He killed two. Uh, I mean, if I'm not mistaken, he killed two unarmed protesters, and I don't remember him, him like the protesters having a gun and firing yeah, at him. Yeah, yeah. It, one of the dudes. Okay, so the first guy he shot had a dude behind him. The guy behind him had a pistol that he fired. So Rittenhouse spins around at that guy that like threw the, he had like a bag, like with a Gatorade in it or something. Remember there was like a plastic bag he threw and then Rittenhouse turns around and shoots that guy coming after him, which in my opinion, like if you're chasing somebody with a gun, like what do you expect to have? You're, you're going to get shot, you know, like that's a bad plan. And then those other dudes were attacking him. Like this isn't me saying, I think it was a good thing. I'm just saying like in that moment, he was defending himself. I, I, well, uh, so for, for one thing, this is why private individuals do not need assault style weapons for one for two guns shouldn't have been at a protest in general. And I hadn't heard of anybody firing a shot at him, but uh, what I've, what I've been to, been able to pull up in, in uh, since you mentioned it was uh, somebody firing off a warning shot. And uh, that's oh, when uh, he on. killed, he killed three people. You fire a warning he shot, shot three. And like, if I have a gun, you have a gun and you fire a warning shot, like, you know what my next reaction would be, you know, or, or vice versa. I mean, once again, I agree with you. That's, well, I mean, I, 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 I don't think that there should have been guns there. Like, it was stupid right, of, of him course, to of fire course. a warning shot. But also, I mean, it, it it's even more stupid for the Rittenhouse dude to bring a gun to a protest. Absolutely. He absolutely. was he it, it really seems like he was just looking for a reason. Yes. 
to yes. fire into that crowd and kill people. And he got one. I mean, I, the I, Trump I just, side, the Republicans are just looking. They're they're aching. They, they can taste it <laughs> that they want to kill somebody and they want to have a legal reason to do it. They and believe, I feel like that was a manifestation of that. They believe we're really evil. My sister, she she's a big Trump fan. Right after the election, I just called to like make sure she wasn't going to do a, a Capitol riot thing. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> Mm-hmm. It, I think it would surprise us how many people we know that seem like normal right wing people, but are actually in this crazy delusional state. Mm-hmm. I called her and I said, hey, how you doing after the election? And she says, well, we're China now. <laughs> you know, like that's how that's how quickly they jump to the extreme. So, I, yeah, I think people like Rittenhouse and, and a whole lot of these other all those Boogaloo boys I was referencing with their guns at that one protest. I know damn well they were just aching to shoot somebody. But here's the creepy thing. I find out later it was the businesses in the area that asked them to show up. That's where the systemic kind of racism stuff comes in is because it's not just the Black Lives Matter people versus the Boogaloo Boys, right? It's also like the businesses in the area worried that the Black Lives Matter people would trash the businesses. So they want to have some kind of security there, which they're not necessarily wrong for wanting to protect their business. It's just like one thing leads to another and they're all connected and it's all I think it's a lot more complicated than good guys, bad guys. Are, are you uh, looking something up? Okay. Uh, no, I mean, I was reading about the Rittenhouse thing uh, and uh, who potentially fired at him. It, I mean, I, uh, I, 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 I wholly disagree with, you know, private citizens having, you know, assault style uh, weapons. But uh, I mean, it, the, the entire situation of a, of, of a uh, protest, I mean, should not include guns, whether you're right. firing off uh, a, a, uh, a warning shot or not that that it seems like a lot of of trump republicans are just chomping at the bit to be able to you know legally kill liberals i agree i feel like i rubbed you the wrong way with that whole thing like like once we got to like blm rittenhouse and all that like i feel like you were like oh man this guy's an asshole well (laughs) i mean I, I mean, I, it does kind of grind my gears a little bit to okay. compare the BLM protests with, you know, the Trump insurrection and everything, because um, the, the fact is, is that the BLM protests uh, were were nationwide. Mm-hmm. Uh, they weren't trying to overthrow the government and uh, the the BLM protestors were reacting to how they were being treated by the police. If the police had treated them like they were Trump supporters, then you probably wouldn't have had the riots. Uh, sure. If if I mean, well, maybe you, you you see how the Trump supporters reacted to the Capitol Police, right? I mean, they quite literally beat a man to death with one of those blue line police flags. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know how how much more irony you can get in a situation, but I mean, that that was just too much for reality, in my opinion. Maybe what what's irritating you is I'm I'm not as passionate about it as you are i don't know i don't my intent my intent wasn't to irritate you i'll say it that way but oh i mean i wasn't uh, i'm sorry if i came across as irritated at you or anything uh i i I mean i'm i guess i'm irritated by uh, because comparison you didn't a lot of people make make those comparisons so i mean it's not specifically you it's just like you know literally uh, like two things that happen two two riots that started as protests that, be, that you know, at least with BLM became riots multiple times. What would you say? A dozen, two dozen times, maybe? I don't, I don't know how many. There I were, mean, I, I don't I don't know how many yeah, uh, right, but, like riots there were exactly. Uh, I mean, I know that was, I think that there was one in Wisconsin. I mean, I'm not really sure. I, I, I didn't keep a running yeah, running yeah, uh, yeah. check of it, but I, I know that there were way more peaceful protests than there were of course, like yeah. riotous actions. But it seems logical. Like one happens left wing riot. Or multiple riots, and then another one happens that's a right wing riot, and they are very Trump centered. I don't see anything going on after Trump lost the election, but it's not like things have improved well, no. within, uh, uh, with racism in the country. And th- they well, ended up electing the guy that wrote the crime bill that they're protesting against, amongst other things. But but I mean, they weren't protesting against the crime bill. I know. Uh, you know all, what I mean. like, also, Biden has said that he has he has made mistakes. The, the The problem with the crime bill was that Republicans wrote the crime bill to subversively get past Democrats, 
uh, to to seem like it was a good bill, but they wrote it in a way that subversively got past Democrats and was able to be implemented in racist ways. So uh, Biden admits that he was wrong about the crime bill. It, right. it, I mean, it would be a lot like saying, you know, pick any one wrong action you've taken in your past and then you're like you have to bear the burden of that for your entire future, even if you admit that you're wrong and you, you know, you, you've worked to, um, you know, over, overcome, you know, that negative action that you took. Um, I really don't think that people should be blamed for the, for the quote unquote sins of their past, uh, for all of eternity. Um, but, uh, also the BLM protests were to protest against cops that were killing unarmed black people mm -hmm. that have been going on. Like this has been an issue since the nineties. The, the, the fact that the, the police seem to have this very racist bend to them where they unfairly target African Americans. And uh, in a lot of cases, um, they are put into the situation where a, un an unarmed black person is killed. Whether it was intentional or unintentional, um, you know, the, the frequency in the police stopping and, and, uh, investigating, you know, unarmed black people that have, uh, no reason, uh, to be stopped and, and questioned on things, um, just only increases the likelihood of an incident occurring. And so that wasn't, none of that was, Trump related like the BLM protests were just not exactly like they, they weren't tied to Trump exactly. Right. It, it was uh, because like the actions of a police officer on the streets in Wisconsin, you know, kneeling on the neck of a, of an unarmed black man, regardless of whether or not he's committed a crime uh, and, and killing him um, is, is a pretty far, far thing from uh you know, Trump and, and what he's able to do because you get the state's rights thing that kind of intersects in that. But with the Trump uh, incident that happened in on January 6th, the insurrection, not not a riot. It was an insurrection because Trump rallied his his troops or his Trumpers and he directly pointed them at the Capitol and told them to fight like hell. And to to retain his presidency because they won't have a government unless they do so otherwise. That was directly a Trump incident. The BLM stuff was just not not Trump related. Grassroots, more or less. Is that, that kind of what you're saying? More, th those were more like grassroots protests, whereas the Capitol riot or you, you say insurrection. I don't know if I call it an insurrection, but but yeah, but but that one was definitely encouraged by trump if not in his exact words in the speech at least throughout his entire presidency was leading up to something like that for sure yeah uh, well i mean i would definitely say that the blm protests um were uh more grassroots than yeah. trump's protests uh, and and uh insurrection goes absolutely well sorry if i rubbed you the wrong way john i think you're an awesome dude i, lo I love your content but um Oh, you didn't run me the wrong way. Okay, cool. I, I know that cool. I do get a bit heated or passionate yeah. about the topic, but uh, I mean, that's just the, the entire subject of like systemic racism in the United States. I mean, it's, it is a heated topic and people have different opinions on it. Yeah. Uh, but I, I just, I think, I, think you're I, I, I just, I just wanted to make sure that like I, 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 I got it in, you know, the, the interview here that, you know, the cer certain facts, uh, you know, it, 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 at least how I understand these situations. So I, I didn't mean for it to sound like I was getting heated at you or anything right, like right. that. But no, we're cool, man. Um, you were definitely huh? right about the AOC thing for sure. Mm -hmm. So I, I appreciate being corrected on that one. I think you're more like an actual Democrat Democrat. If, if, I don't mean that in a bad way, but you know what I mean? Like you're actually like um, we're both liberal, but I'm probably more of uh anti-democrat liberal whereas a, a second ago correct me if i'm wrong but you actually it seemed like you were saying that the 94 crime bill was like the democrats aren't responsible because they got tricked by the republicans and they said they're sorry which like to, like i hear something like that no no no, no i'm like no, what well, no, you know but uh, I'm, I'm, uh, that's not what I said. I didn't say the Democrats were sorry. I said Biden had, Biden, uh, you sure. know, recognized publicly recognized that he was wrong in that, and and um, that you know uh, the fact that he's recognized that he's wrong in it and everything. But it, it's that's, no, yeah. it's no, um, you know, hidden fact that the Republicans uh, subversively, you know, wrote that crime bill or helped help craft the crime bill. 
and uh, subversively did it to where it was it, it could and was uh, racially implemented mm. um, to to unfairly target uh, black Americans. Uh, I mean that I'm not saying that that absolves the Democrats of any uh, of of making the mistakes, but I mean if 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 they recognize that they made the mistake. I don't see the point in continuously like throwing that in their face. Right. I mean, I don't, I don't know. Do you see a point in continuously blaming them? Uh, even if, uh, bl- well, specifically Biden, uh, since we're talking about him specifically here, I don't know about any of the other um, people that voted for the crime bill, just specifically Biden, who's recognized that he, you know, uh, he was wrong about that crime bill. Um, and that you know he's 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 uh, tried to work to uh, you know um, over overcome those bad decisions. Like, do you think that you should still really blame him for that? I can appreciate you know him saying I was wrong there, but I think his hiring of Kamala Harris as his VP lets us know he's still full of shit. And so yeah, like obviously he's just doing what a politician does and just saying whatever's cool at the time, just like. Uh, the Clintons did, or, or no, just like the Obamas did with uh, uh, gay marriage. You know, like once once it's like the hip thing to do, they're like, yeah, I'm for it. But I, I just feel like they're playing us, man. Like, I don't I don't I don't trust those motherfuckers at all. <laughs> I think they'll just tell us whatever we want to hear. In the ones I mean, for as far as politicians go at, at a certain point in time. Uh, let's say let, let's take Obama out of, you know, the the 2008 um, election cycle. Let's put them like back in uh, 96 or something like that. Mm-hmm. If as a politician, if they would have been pro uh, gay marriage, they probably wouldn't be, you know, uh, elected into office. Sure. Yeah. And and that's because of the the American people. You know, what 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 are their interests? So, I mean, really, if you want to blame anybody for how politicians have to frame their positions or how politicians have to very specifically, you know, direct what they what they uh, can accomplish and will accomplish, then you really need to blame the American citizens uh, because only the American citizens can control this Overton window that exists um, in politics and. Would you? So while while they do tell you things that you want to hear, they I, I feel like they definitely speak to their base that they're hoping to speak for, and that either helps or hurts you. And I, I'm I'm you were saying that I'm very much a Democrat. I, I mean I I voted for Bernie. Like right. I voted for Bernie back when Trump was elected, and I voted for Bernie uh, this time. And of course, you know, he, he didn't get the Democratic nomination. But uh, I mean, I, I, I very much identify, you know, as that kind of liberal. Right, right. Um, and so that's why I said that Biden's not my first choice. And he's definitely less progressive than I would like him to be. But uh, he, he, he is on the, you know, left side. Uh, of the center line. And, uh, you know, while he may not be great in some areas, uh, he's definitely not as bad as Trump. Would you give the right the same pass that you just gave the left politicians? The, 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 well, would you what do you mean exactly? When, when, when I say the Democrats are pieces of shit, you say, well, it's really their constituents to blame. But oh, would you, would you yes. give the same thing for right wing politicians? Would you say it's really not that Trump's a bad guy? He's just appealing to all these these deplorable MAGA people. Well, I, uh, well, I mean, yes, I, 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 I definitely do say that, but also, um, we, we've seen the Trumpers like they, they grew, uh, in a lot of numbers and, uh, you know, Trump saw in, in, uh, whatever kind of, of, sampling that he was looking at as far as the Republican, you know, right wing people. I mean, he he saw exactly what he needed to get elected and he played directly into that. He he promised things that he couldn't deliver on and uh, he he knew what people wanted. He gave them that and then he staunchly kept on giving them that. Mm -hmm. And now what we're seeing with Republicans is they are jumping on that bandwagon too. They see what the the um, the Republican crowd 
want out of uh, of a candidate. You do see some Republicans that are pushing back against it, like that uh, that Liz Cheney thing that you were uh, talking about. I mean, you see Republican pushback against things, and I I I know I may come off as a very anti-Republican type of person. I'm really not. I'm anti-radical right-wing crazy loons <laughs> is what I am. The right. problem is is that. That seems to be what a majority of the Republican is made up of, a Republican Party is made up of right now. Crazy, radical, right wing loons. And you see this with, you know, who they vote into office. I mean, uh, you know, they, they have quite literally voted a QAnon uh, conspiracy theorist who, uh, harassed, uh, school shooting victims and claimed that school shootings just didn't happen. They elected that person oh, into yeah. office. Uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene. She's freaking nuts. Oh yeah, my God. she is. And so I, I definitely think that the the Republican base is um, uh, is to blame for how the Republicans are appealing to them because they are the ones that want the the crazy radically uh, radical right people who you know th- th- that throw all of these. Um, uh, you know, kind of violent rhetoric out there that, uh, you know, that, that gets their blood pumping against liberally minded people that just want to, you know, somehow hurt the liberals and either metaphorically or as we've seen on January 6th, very, uh, very physically. And mm-hmm. so, I mean, it, it, it seems to me like if, if you want to blame somebody for how the, uh, politicians present themselves and the positions that they present. I really think that you need to look at the supporting base. Like, who, who are the individuals that are supporting them? What is you know the percentage of of those individuals that makes up the larger party? I think that that's what we're seeing with the Republican Party right now. Is that you've got all of these people? What was it? Seventy four million people. 74 million Republicans out there that voted um, for Donald Trump, you know, this last election. And and even 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 though we lost, you still have those 74 million people out there that are behind Trump. And so that is what the Republican Party has to focus on. Otherwise, they won't be voted into office by their constituents. Yeah, it's 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 a scary time for sure. Hopefully we don't get any more populism from the right. Hopefully it kind of gets backed into whatever whatever normal right wing is but not what we just saw for the last four years uh john i really appreciate it i enjoy talking to you and and uh i learned a couple things too so it was a great conversation everybody i would direct you to check out godless engineer if you haven't already done it links in the show notes thanks john Oh, no. Thank you for having me on. Again, I'm so sorry if I got a little heated about the topic. It wasn't against you personally or anything like that. I just I really this is one of the places where I'm pretty passionate about it. But uh, my my channel and and, and, uh, all that uh, all all of my content that I produce there is really focused on just the vertical of like, uh, you know, uh, religion and where religion intersects in our daily lives and society. So um, I don't I don't I don't, you know, talk about politics a lot on my channel, but it does come up sometimes. Sure, sure. I think it was it was right around the uh, the written house. Well, I think technically that was self-defense. And so like right at that moment, you were like, motherfucker, <laughs> in your head, at least not, not out loud, of course. But but no, no. no. Well, you, I mean, you, you, I, you. I still don't think I'm, I'm still not sure if the whole self-defense thing can really. Yeah, uh, it, it is a really good defense for him. No, um, but I, I, I do, uh, you know, after a precursory uh, lookup of the information, somebody did fire a shot. Uh, as a warning shot but regardless i don't think that he should have you know fired into the crowd and killed people i I think that that was a bit i think both both sides had a bit of an overreaction there that ended up with the deaths of uh at least one person on rittenhouse's uh accord and then i think another person got killed at that rally too we gotta get his elbow blown off either way rittenhouse is a piece of shit we can agree to that and uh, <laughs> I, I really appreciate yeah, we it. We can come to that again. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I appreciate you coming on, man. It's good talking to you. Oh, thank you for having me on. Thank you to John. Thank you to Dave Blair at DaveBlairMusic.com. Thank you to Feedspot.com. 
for promoting the right to reason to the top 10 atheist podcast. Thank you to our patrons, Jason Parker, Freethinker215, Alan Marks, Philip Spawn, Bernard Lamborell, Enema Man, Larry Wilson, and our top supporter, Rob Montgomery. You can support this broadcast at patreon.com forward slash right. And learn more at the right to reason.com. Next week, we are talking to Christian apologist Elmo. Yes, that's his name. Between now and then, remember that you have the right to reason. It's the Right to Reason Podcast. <laughs>